Given uh, the situation today, I think that uh, encounters with the police more often than not are going to lead to detention um, or at least a, uh, a moment with an immigration officer. And because of that, I think it's really important that people who are in danger of being taken into immigration custody, that they make preparations ahead of time. And one of the most important things is, is possibly to have the contact information of a good immigration attorney. Um, the, the immigration system is, is very different from the criminal system, and so sometimes it can be difficult for family members or friends to locate people um, who are taken into immigration custody. Immigration attorneys who are familiar with the detention and removal process are much better equipped to locate people. They know the right numbers to call, and so it's helpful if you have that contact, contact information. It's also helpful if the individual gives that contact information to a family member or a friend so that more than one person has that information. Um, in addition, I think for people who are in danger of going into immigration custody, you have to think about your life a little bit in terms of making preparations. If you have children, um, you might want to think about um, making some sort of power of, an, power of attorney so that a family member or a friend can take care of your children. Um, if you have money or property or things that you can liquidate in order to pay for an attorney, um, you might want to consider a financial power of attorney f with someone that you trust because an important thing for non-citizens to know is that in an immigration court you have the right to be represented by an attorney, but you don't have the right to have an attorney paid for. Never sign anything. Before you, if you are taken into custody by the police, you, it's, it's really important that you not sign things. Um, if you are in a criminal system, in a crimi if it's a criminal matter and uh, the, the Commonwealth's attorney or the state's attorney wants to offer a deal, um, it's not enough just to speak with a criminal attorney. You need to speak with an immigration attorney. And that's because what is good for an, a criminal attorney, a good outcome for a criminal attorney is not always a good outcome for an immigration attorney. And so even though you may be thinking that you're going to complete your criminal sentencing or the process and that's going to be the end of it, it's probably not true. There are some long-term consequences for people in the immigration system based on their criminal convictions or lack thereof. So it's important that you always contact an immigration attorney before accepting any plea bargains or anything like that. And similarly, if you end up in the custody of the Immigration Service, you should never sign off on any documents um, until you've spoken with an immigration attorney. That's how people end up with really quick and fast deportation orders that they weren't aware of. Know where you live. Um, if you live in a place or a county or a locality where there's increased cooperation between the local authorities and and immigration, uh, the key is to not expose yourself to the possibility of, of having one of these encounters or an arrest. Um, so that means basically that you don't want to be committing acts or you don't want to be committing acts that are going to lead to your arrest or any kind of stops. If you are in one of these localities, then there's also the very real possibility that the police will be looking for individuals that they suspect are unlawfully here in the United States. So that, that's another aspect of living in an area that has increased cooperation with, with the Immigration Service. The police only get to enter your home if they have a warrant. So I would re-emphasize what the 10 Rules video says, which is if they say they have a warrant, then you need, to, you need to ask to see it. And if they don't have the warrant, then they don't have permission to enter your home. If they have a warrant, you need to uh, confirm that the warrant was signed by a judge. Um, otherwise, they, they don't reiterate, I reiterate, they don't have permission to enter your home. This is different, though, from an ICE warrant. Um, warrants that are issued by, by the Department of Homeland Security uh, are generally not warrants to enter and search a home. They are generally warrants for arrest for a person or a particular group of persons. That, again, does not give them uh, permission to enter your home. So if you're going to answer the door and, the, and it is immigration and they say they have a warrant, you're going to want to see that warrant and make sure that you are that individual or that that individual is present. Um, I think the, the other issue here is that because it doesn't give them permission to enter the home, um, if you are going to respond to the police, who, to the ICE, to, sorry, to immigration who has a warrant in their hand, you might want to step outside the house. Um, it's my experience that many non-citizens live in group housing. And if you permit the police to enter the home, then everyone in the house is endangered. Um, and, and I would advise people to, to keep that in mind. Um, 
as the Ten Rules video says, I'm not sure that it isn't the answer to perhaps just not answer the door if you know it's ice. It's important to note that if you are released from criminal custody, but for some reason you haven't left the jail yet, it's because the local authorities or the state authorities have informed immigration that you may be a person who um, is here unlawfully. Um, so Im the immigration authorities have placed a detainer or hold on your person. So even though you've completed a sentence or a bond has been paid, you're not going to be leaving the facility because they're going to transfer you into the custody of the immigration service, and they have that right. Um, the law says, though, that the Immigration Service has 48 hours to make a determination about whether to keep you in custody. So from the moment that you should be leaving the jail, there, should be about, there, there shouldn't be more than 48 hours from, before you hear from immigration or before determination is made. It's important to keep in mind, though, that back to one of the earlier rules, that you need to know your jurisdiction. Because when you're in a jurisdiction where there's increased or heightened cooperation between immigration and the authorities, there are a lot of exceptions to that rule that they somehow seem to maneuver.